It's April and I've got a knee-friendly power walk. No equipment needed, so let's go. All right, killer bees, let's go ahead and get moving and grooving. And that means that we're getting started with our warm ups with some arm circles and high knees. You guys, welcome to the workout. I'm already singing. <laughs> I'm Paula B. I'm your best middle aged fitness friend. And around here, we are all about making peace with your menopausal body by finding a healthy weight and moving in ways that feel like love. And today is definitely going to feel like love if you don't love squats or lunges. We are knee friendly today, meaning that we are absolutely squat free and lunge free and because we're you know here we already don't do any kind of jumping we don't do any transitions to the ground we keep things beautifully moderate so you can beat your fitness and weight loss goals you guys and this one this one is one of my favorite kind of workouts honestly this I think the reason why I love power walk so much is because I really started my my true fitness journey with walking and I still something that I love to do still something Thing that I do very regularly, but I also, I love to spice it up a little bit like we're gonna do today. Let's go ahead and do some arm crossers with booty kickers. Here's what it looks like. I've got the handy dandy gym boss here, set for intervals of one minute and 30 seconds. That's two different intervals. So the one minute is always gonna be walking. When in doubt, come on back to walking. If I'm doing some other exercise that you don't like, can't do, don't understand, feel confused by, don't want to do, whatever, come on back to walking because that really is the cornerstone of what we're doing today. We're getting our heart rate up and keeping it up at a nice moderate level for the entire workout. This one also happens to be nice and no repeat, which which means that if there is an exercise that you don't like, can't do, are confused by or whatever, we're only going to do it for the one interval. Let's go ahead and do some welcome to my homes, my friends. I am not spending a ton of time on our warm up here because really what we're doing is so much walking and walking is such a beautiful way to raise and then keep your moderate heart rate up that we don't need to be doing a whole lot. I just want to make sure that we're moving through our range of motion so that the other low impact cardio exercises that we do end up feeling good. You're going to have your heart rate up by the time we even get to the first one. So let's go ahead and get going with our walking. Now here's the thing about walking, my friends. There are lots of things that I'm going to tell you about walking today. <laughs> Number one is that walking is one of the most essential skills that we have. We have I really should have looked this up. I know it, but I can't think of how many there are. There are a handful, let's say, of essential skills that basically are a good measure of our fitness. I know that there's pulling, pushing, squatting, something else, and walking. I think there's five. I'm going to look that up because now that I've started talking about it, where I was really going with it though, is that walking is one of the best ways to ensure lifelong fitness. I'm going to tell you really quickly, when it beeps, we've got plenty of time, but when it beeps, we're doing half jacks. It's half of a jumping jack. It's like the right half and then the left half, and you can take it at whatever pace feels good. Because by the way, did I mention, in addition to the no repeat, there's also no rest. So we're really thinking about our nice, moderate heart rate today. Here we go with those half jacks. Now, these low impact cardio exercises are very likely to raise your heart rate a little bit higher just because we've got your hands above your head for quite a few of them. So be taking them at a pace that might be different than your walking pace. When it beeps again, of course, we're going back to that walking. And that really is meant to be what I consider the moderator of your heart rate. You are welcome to take it at whatever pace feels best for you. But my friends, what's best for you? Here we come back to walking. What's best for you? is moderate. I, I tell you, I tell you so frequently, but if you have not heard my moderation conversation, you guys really welcome to it. That means that you're probably new here. The thing about being this glorious age, no matter what age you are, is that there is room in your life for exercise every single day. However, the only way to be able to do that is by taking it at a moderate pace that you could literally do every single day. When it beeps again, we're doing swimming frogs, <laughs> which means that we're going to have our hands up overhead. We're going to bring our elbows down, like really keep your elbows wide as they're coming down. And one foot, one knee is going to come up and out to the side at a time. It's not a full swimming frog because that would require a lot of jumping. So it's like one, one leg of the swimming frog at a time. <laughs> but it is, it is something of like a froggy stroke, like if you were swimming. I don't do a lot of swimming, so I'm not really sure about that. <laughs> 
<laughs> but one knee on one side and then one knee on the other side. Hands go up, elbows come down. Really keeping those elbows wide means that we're thinking about pulling in your core. We're not getting too much of an arch in your back other than what is natural. Having your hands up over your head brought your heart rate up. <laughs> so you might cool this down, not cool it down, but slow it down a little bit to make sure that your heart rate stays moderate. Now I know you're going to ask me, Paula, what is moderate for me? What number is that on my fitness tracker? Let's come back to walking. I will tell you that even though I do have a heart rate tracker, even though I do watch my heart rate and I kind of know, I personally really prefer to go by perceived exertion, meaning how do you feel right now? Which honestly I think is always it's always your best indicator <laughs> because if you are thinking about your body and really thinking, like tuning in, not necessarily closing your eyes, but really tuning in, how do I feel right now? That is so much better information for you than anything a smartwatch can tell you. You guys, when it beeps again, we're doing forward hinge arm flappers, which means that we're going to stand with our feet a little bit wider than hip width apart, core pulled in nice and tight like we do even while we're walking. <laughs> your hands are going to be doing jumping jacks even though there is no jumping. Your lower body is going to be doing deadlifts, which means your hips are going to push back behind you and then pull back underneath you. Really thinking about your hips, your gluteal muscles driving this motion. Here we go. Whew. Now some of this, of course, is going to be a little bit of flexibility back there in your hamstrings, which as you can see, my knees bend a little bit because I'm not super flexible in my hamstrings. I am, however, nice and strong with my glutes, so I feel pretty confident about this range of motion for me. You get to pay attention to your range of motion. You get to tune in to your body to figure out what feels best for you, where your body is going, what pace feels good for you. Come on, back to walking. By spending time paying attention to your body. I personally think that that is one of the best things that you can do with exercise is actually really increase your brain body connection. When you spend time thinking, how do I feel right now? Is my heart rate, is my heart rate beating like really fast? Is it still really slow? Does it feel out of control? Does it feel doable? Like, where is it right now? Can I talk? <laughs> Clearly I can. <laughs> But when you listen versus looking at your watch, which by the way, my writing on my watch is way too tiny for me to actually see what my heart rate is right now. When you listen to your body's signals, your body has all the information you need. When it beeps again, we're doing kick jacks. Once again, our hands are going to be doing jumping jacks. We had a lot of that today without any jumping at all. Your lower body is going to be kicking. This is the great thing about not having any kind of squats or lunges. We've got lots of arm movements to get our heart rate where we want it to be today. And again, where you want your heart rate to be is manageable, whatever feels good to you. So this is a nice kick. We're not trying to get any real power out of it. If you do find, by the way, if you do find that your heart rate feels like it's out of control or like you're really struggling to breathe, bring your hands down a little bit. The lower your hands, the lower your heart rate, you can still be moving, still getting some work out of this, but you don't have to be, you don't have to come to a screeching halt to bring your heart rate down. And you also don't have to be moving at top speed, top range of motion, top everything. We're right back to walking now. <sighs> Such a good job. Your body has all the information that you need. And I say that, I say that really specifically to my friends who are dealing with pain right now. This is a knee friendly workout. And I know that you have lots of reasons why your knees are the way they are. But if you are in active knee pain at any point in time while we are working out, my friends, you should not be working out. You should be seeing your doctor. You should be getting physical therapy. When it beeps again, we're doing middle skips. One hand and its opposite knee is coming up as though we are skipping, even though we are not jumping or skipping in any manner. It's still a skipping motion. One of my favorites. One of my favorites because it proves to me how far I've come since kindergarten. I had, I had a grade on my report card for skipping when I was five years old and in kindergarten and I failed. It was, oh, I was going to say it was the only class I failed. That is not true. I failed at least one in college because I totally forgot to withdraw in time. But this skipping motion was beyond me when I was a small child. I am not naturally very coordinated or athletic at all. 
And yet here I am making a career of it. <laughs> Let that be all you need to know about what is possible for you, my friends. When it beeps again, of course, we're coming right back <laughs> to walking. And I'm gonna come back to my nagging conversation about you being in pain, my friends. If I had a dollar for every time somebody told me, oh, I'm in pain, but I'm still doing your workouts, I, I, I wouldn't want that money. I would love it, I would love it if you would listen to your body. Your body has all the information you need when you are in pain. What you need is physical therapy. What you need is some kind of remediation for your pain. Working out while you are in pain isn't getting you where you wanna go. When it beeps again, we're doing rainbow jacks, which means that we're bringing our hands swooping up overhead like a rainbow from side to side, bringing up one knee out to one side at a time. Kind of like those swimming frogs, except we're, we're swimming with a rainbow. <laughs> We're thinking about having your core pulled in nice and tight right now also, but specifically as we raise one foot off the ground. When we have one foot raised off the ground, we're having all of our balance on one small point of our body. So we really wanna make sure that we're bringing that work up into our big muscles, our abdominal muscles and our gluteal muscles as well. Rainbow jacks here, slowing it down a little bit. I notice when both hands go up, up, up. So does my heart rate. I'm listening to what my body is saying feels moderate for me. Hopefully you are figuring out what feels moderate for you. I know that sometimes we wanna push, push, push. We wanna push through pain. We wanna push past our heart rate. We wanna push into the red, into that super sweaty zone. Here we come back to walking. We wanna push, push, push. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but pushing, pushing has its place. It is one of our essential skills. <laughs> we started our conversation like that, but it is not the only essential skill. The other essential skill is pulling, pulling back, pulling down to a level that is actually going to get you where you want to go. Everything in life has its actions and its reactions. It's equal and what is that? One of Newton's laws of physics. You don't always need to be pushing. Sometimes we need to pull back and really listen to what our body is saying. When it beeps again, we're doing reach across. I love reach across because it's exactly what it is. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes on my whiteboard, I'll read something and I'm like, oh my gosh, what are we doing for that? Because it's some silly name like swimming frogs or something like that. I'm like, which one was that? But reach across, we're just reaching across. <laughs> You're reaching across in front of your body while tapping that same leg out to what ends up being the opposite side because you are reaching across your body. Whew, that means that we've got our core pulled in nice and tight. That's how we get our standing up straight Whew, is by having our core nice and strong. It helps us with every one of these motions. Having a strong core, by the way, will help your knees as much as almost any kind of exercise. Here we come back to walking. When we, when we move in ways that hurt ourselves, sometimes through like an actual injury and sometimes through like long-term just movement patterns that we have, things that we do on the daily that we don't really think about, sometimes we can develop pain in parts of our body, specifically our knees or our shoulders is where we get a lot of pain. Sometimes in our hips or our ankles too, but it really tends to be knees and shoulders. When it beeps again, we're doing day breaks. <laughs> we're tapping from side to side and we've got our hands up overhead. Again, kind of like a rainbow. Got a lot of overhead today, really making sure that we are working our whole body, getting our heart rate at a place that feels best for us. But when you find yourself in pain because of some chronic motion that you have, your best bet truly is to talk to your doctor and get a referral to physical therapy. I cannot tell you enough how helpful physical therapy is. And I know that some of you, here we go with day breaks, tapping from side to side, just swaying gently as though we are singing along with Barry Manilow's very lovely song, Day Break. It's why I call these day breaks. This is a, a favored childhood memory of mine of singing in my Aunt Marty's little teeny tiny car with me and three of my cousins and both of my siblings to that song. My aunt was a big Barry Manilow fan. I still am. I'm a fan -a if you will. <laughs> and right back to walking. Oh my gosh. She was definitely the fun aunt. <laughs> but 
because you guys, physical therapy for specific pains, the reason it works is because it is correcting a motion that you aren't doing properly, naturally. And I don't mean that as any kind of indictment of you and the way you move, I, we all have them. We all have movement patterns that have become efficient because we practice them, but that aren't necessarily the way your body wants to move. When it beeps again, we're doing ding dongs, which is actually very much like day breaks, except that our hands are swinging low from side to side rather than overhead from side to side. So as we're swinging low, that same side leg is kicking out to the side. This one we can really get rocking on. We can really challenge our balance a little bit. We can really have some fun with it. Make sure that your core is pulled in, that you're thinking about your movement patterns. And here's what I'm gonna continue telling you about physical therapy. The reason, the reason it works, here we go with these ding-dongs. I call them ding-dongs, honestly. <laughs> they could be called weeble wobbles because we're tipping ourselves over, but it just reminds me of a bell, like the clanger or the clapper inside of a bell, swinging from side to side, ding and dong. <laughs> and that is how I name my exercises. But physical therapy is correcting muscle imbalances. It is changing your movement patterns by finding the one or two or three, here we come back to walking, very small muscles. Physical therapy tends to work very small muscles rather than big muscle groups like we do with, like most of my exercises are big muscle group, whole body kind of movements. Physical therapy really tends to hone in on the tiny muscles. I mean, we have I should know this number, 600 muscles in our body, something like that. There's lots of little ones that I don't know the names to, but your physical therapist does. That's what we work on to correct our movement patterns. When it beeps again, we're doing cheerleader kicks. Gonna have our hands starting at shoulder height with our elbows out really, really wide. Hands are gonna go up and down like we're cheering for the team, yay, while we're kicking one foot at a time, obviously, because we couldn't kick both. The thing about physical therapy is that it takes a lot longer than you think. And this is what I want to really leave you with today as part of my, my conversation slash nagging you <laughs> to get physical therapy for your pain, is that it's actually gonna take you so much longer than you think. You might be out of pain. Here we go with cheerleader kicks. You might be out of pain, like physical, like daily chronic kind of pain, relatively quickly, but in order to truly change your motion, change your, your physical, movement patterns. It takes months and sometimes years. I've been doing my physical therapy exercises for 10 years now. I don't do them daily like I used to when I had really bad sciatica 10 years ago. I did daily physical therapy and only physical therapy. Here we come back to walking. No other exercise at all, not even walking when I had sciatica for about six weeks. And I was out of like really active pain in about six weeks, but I wasn't, I didn't feel 100%. And so I did daily, in addition to other things, for up to about six months, and here I am 10 years later, I still do those exercises like once or twice a week. I get down on the ground, I pull my knee to my chest, I put it down slowly. Pull my other knee to my chest and I put it down slowly. When it beeps again, we're doing flying windmills. Okay, so this is a lot like windmill tap backs, but we're flying. It's a little bit more balance work, you guys. We're gonna reach our opposite hand, we're gonna make like a big X. We're gonna make our, reach our opposite hand down towards our opposite foot. But rather than tapping that same foot back, that same foot is gonna go flying out to the side. Yes, don't you go flying. We're reaching down as far as we can reach and we're kicking out as far as we can kick while keeping it moderate and paying attention to ourselves. So reaching down, whoo, doggies. Oh my gosh, I knew this one was going to be fun and tough. Oh, here we go. This is a big motion whew, that really requires a lot of paying attention. Oh, pulling your core. Oh my gosh, okay, this one's definitely gonna make the rotation again. I'm enjoying this. Feel that work in your booty. Feel yourself throwing yourself off of balance. Feel how high your heart rate got. <laughs> Bring it on back down with some walking. That was a fun challenge. I liked that one a lot. Flying windmills, we're, we're definitely gonna do that again. Okay, hey, you guys, speaking of my terrible coordination, 
Coming up next is our last exercise. It's something I call walking stars now because when I tried to call it something else, my body didn't understand it. It's a box step or a V step. We're gonna step forward with one foot and reach up that same hand. Then we'll step forward with the other foot and reach up that hand. Then we're gonna step back and step back. Then we're gonna change leader legs, step forward with the other foot and then step forward and then step back and step back. My friend calls it picking an apple and put it in your pocket. I love that one too. This is, this is one of those exercises that my brain could not comprehend until I thought about it in a different way. This is the magic of your brain body connection, my friends. Sometimes you have to have your own mnemonic device. Here we go, step forward, forward, back and back, forward on the other side, back and back. And yes, I do have to say it out loud sometimes too, because that's the only thing that actually helps me. And let me tell you, my friends, this is it. We're done, but we're not quite finished. When it beeps again, we are not coming back to walking. We are going directly into my finisher, the hardest thing we're doing today, which isn't really that hard, but it's hard enough. We're doing star balance. We're going directly from walking stars into star balance, which is going to be kind of challenging because our heart rate is up pretty high. Hands up overhead. Oh, Blossom. Blossom got worried about that star balance. We're tipping over to one side, however far you can recover from. That's the trick with star balance. The other trick is that, oh my gosh, we slowed way down. We've been doing cardio, my heart is pounding, and now we're coming into this slow balance, and this is the long interval. That's why we're not walking. <laughs> this is the full minute, and that's why we're really thinking about finding our balance. Pull in your core, unclench your toes. Think about your abs and your glutes being the center of your balance, because they are. It's the center of your body, it's the center of your balance. <sighs> Finding your center, finding your balance is essential. We don't talk about that as one of our essential skills, but it's one of my essential skills. It's one of the things that I think keeps you on your feet, keeps you independent, keeps you healthy and strong and able to live your best life for a long, long time. Ah, that was it, my friends. What a good job you did. I'm gonna do some tappers here. Huh. And even though we had our hands up overhead, we're still gonna do a little bit of arm circles. Oh, just to cool this down. You can keep your arms down a little bit lower if you need to lower your heart rate now, but we're really thinking about moving through your range of motion, stretching out those arms, stretching your shoulders, stretching your back, letting your body know that all the squeezing is done, all the cardio is done, your heart rate can come back down, your muscles can relax. What a great, great job you did today. Listen in to what your body has to say to you about today. Your brain might very well offer you, well, that wasn't enough, I didn't get very sweaty, but your body is gonna tell you that was exactly right. I could do this every single day for the rest of my life. And that is what moderate feels like, my friend. Let's open it up nice and wide. Ah, and close it up. Give yourself a big hug and a pat on your back. Oh my gosh, what a great job you did today. Super, super proud of you. Here on screen, you know I'm gonna have an extended cool down for you. A little bit more walking, a little bit more stretching, really bringing your heart rate down, working on stretching all of those big, big muscles. On the other side of the screen, if you'd like your daily reminder about why we work out moderately, why this is so good for weight loss, I've got everything you need to know about losing weight at 50 and beyond here on screen. And make sure you click that subscribe button and I'll see you tomorrow.